Welcome to CW 6.1. So first, the thing to understand is that we're working on systems of equations. So I know this is a topic you've studied extensively, and in pre-calc, we're just going to review it and talk a little bit a little bit about the theory. So for this first system, let's use the technique called elimination. So I'll multiply this top equation by negative three, the bottom one by positive two. Let's take a look at what happens. I get negative 12x minus 18y, that's equal to negative 36. And then on the bottom one, I get positive 12x plus 18y, that's equal to 24. And in elimination, we're just trying to eliminate one of these variables. But notice how in this case, they both actually cancel. So when I add these, I get zero is equal to negative 12, which I know is not true. So in this situation, we would say there's no solution to the system, which is interesting because most times we actually do get a solution. So above here, let's put a little note. So the graphical representation of what we're doing is this. In most situations, you have your system and you get one solution, and that would look something like this. One line, you have another line here. This intersection point would be considered your one solution. Our problem we just had in no solution what happens there is that the system is running two parallel lines like that, which means they don't intersect. This would be no solution. Now for this problem, let's try it out. We could use elimination, but in this problem, we're going to use substitution. So we're going to plug this thing in right here. So 15x minus 5 times 3x minus 2 equals 10. And in this one, we're going to notice something kind of weird. The 15x cancels out, and we get 10 equals 10, which is true. So in this situation, in Algebra 1, you normally would just write infinite solutions. But in precalc, we have to really deeply understand what that would mean. So first, graphically, we have to understand that if this happens, what that means is that your two equations, your two lines, they actually overlap. So you imagine like another line here. They overlap like this. So all of these solutions are going to work. Now, how do we represent that is the question. So what you do is you think, well, normally we would write x comma y for some generic coordinate. But what we're going to do instead is write x comma 3x minus 2. And the reason I did that is because look up here. We said right here that y is equal to 3x minus 2. So what I did was I took this 3x minus 2 and I replaced it for that y right over here. So this actually is a pretty cool representation. This piece right here is your infinite solution. That's what it really means. And you could use it to generate possible answers. So for example, possible answers could be, let's plug in 0, so 0, negative 2. You could plug in 1, so 1, 1, and plug in 2 and plug in, so that'd be like four. And we could do this forever, and that's what it really means to have an infinite solution. So in pre-calc, this is what you'll be doing. You can't just simply write infinite solutions like in knowledge one. We're gonna write this. Now let's go to the next problem. This should be review for most of you. We're gonna be talking about how to solve a system with three equations. And the first thing I want all of you to do is label it E1, E2, E3. 
that's just gonna organize your work a little bit cleaner. So for step one, what I like to do is eliminate a variable. And it doesn't really matter which one. So I'm just gonna pick a Z just because I like eliminating Z, but it doesn't really matter. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna pick equation one and equation two. Because I'm looking at this, I'm seeing negative four and two. That looks pretty nice. So I'm gonna notice that equation one is fine the way it is, but what I wanna do is multiply equation two by two. So you're gonna write that 2e2, and then we're gonna add them. So that's gonna help me look at your work and also help you stay organized. So I'm gonna rewrite equation one. I'm gonna write 2e2, that would be 6x plus 6y plus 4z equals negative six. Now we add. And of course, notice that they get eliminated right here. This is gone. So now we get 11x plus 4y, that's negative 3. We will label this one equation 4. Now for step 2, what you want to do is eliminate the same variable using two different equations. So I used E1 and E2, which means I can no longer use those together. So instead I'll use E2 and E3. And I could have used like E1 and E3. I just think E2 and E3 would be a little bit easier. So I'm gonna write, I'm using E2 and E3. This is a little bit harder. So I see this is two and three. So to get rid of this, I'm gonna multiply E2 by three, and I'm gonna add it to negative two E3. So that should make the z's cancel. So 3e2 is going to be 9x plus 9y plus 6z equals negative 9 and negative 2e3 that's 4x minus 10y minus 6z that equals negative 6. Now we add it and again notice that the z's cancel which is what we wanted. Now we have 13x minus y equals negative 15. We'll call that E5. Another way of that, step three, is we can finally solve. Because look at this, we have two equations with two variables, and that's pretty easy to solve. So looking at that, I can see the y's look good to work with. So I'm gonna leave E4 alone and I'm gonna multiply E5 by four. So I'll rewrite equation four. Let's multiply equation five by four. That would be 52X minus four Y equals negative 60. Now let's add and look at that. 63X equals negative 63. So X must be negative one. And now we just, we're gonna back substitute. So if X is negative one, let's pick, I'll pick this one. 11 X plus four Y equals negative three. Plug in negative one there. Negative 11 plus four Y is negative three. So four Y must be eight. So Y must be two. And then for the final variable, you can pick any of these doesn't really matter. I'll pick equation one, 5x minus 2y minus 4z equals three. We plug in negative one, negative five, plug in two, minus four. And now we can solve for z. So negative nine minus four z must equal three. Negative four z is equal to 12. So z must be negative three. So to write the answer as a coordinate, you would say negative one comma two comma negative three. And if you're wondering conceptually what's happening, we're essentially finding the intersection of planes. So it's a little bit crazy, but imagine here's a plane and then 
we have another plane here. And then we can do one more plane like this. So now we're working in three dimensions. So we're kind of saying that these three planes are going to meet at some single point. That's kind of the context of what we're doing. Okay, so that's it. So good luck on the homework, and let me know if you have any questions.